to the Manhattan Center at the very heart of New York City and the very first pro judo event. I'm Neil Adams and joining me today is America's very first world judo champion, Mike Swain. We're going to have some great matches tonight. Olympic champions, world champions, all I can say is bodies are flying. Watch out for pro judo because it's going to come and get you. This is Pro Judo with Neil Adams, all-European judo champion, and Mike Swain, former world champion. Special guest ring announcer, Dr. Dre. And keeping the beat, DJ Scribble. Pro Judo is brought to you in part by WooWare. It's what you want. It's what you need. And Old Milwaukee, America's best tasting beer. In the white corner, from Taiwan, in the Taiwanese... National team, we have Young Ming Ling. And from the Puerto Rican world team member, his hometown is Oguada, Puerto Rico. In the blue corner, Carlos Mendez. We're back, and what a match we've got here tonight. Young Ming Ling, Taiwan, against Alberta Mendez of the USA, and uh, they're really pumped up for this, Mike. That's right, Neil. The name of the game is just to ultimately throw your opponent onto his back with force and control. That scores 10 points. You, you gotta get 20 points. First one to get 20 points wins. So the first round, and um, one and a half minutes each round. Oh, look at that. In a thigh throw, so uh, Mendez, has to watch out for that because uh, mingling, that's his favorite technique. So they're fighting for grips, Mike. How intense is it? Oh, well, has he got to watch out for those? Carlos is extremely explosive. Once he gets underneath you, Neil, it could be all over. Well, I know that he comes from uh, so many different angles and uh, mingling, well, he knows that, so he's going to watch out for that. So fighting for grips. So much a part of judo. There it is again. Oh. Well, he didn't have the sleeves. He didn't get the rotation. So uh, no score. Still no score in this first round. Again, it's Neil. The other way to score in pro judo is pinning, arm lock, and choke. Well, the belt's come off, and uh, he's got to do it up again. And the referee, well, he wants them to get it tied up and get on with the action. Mendez... Well, very explosive. Doesn't look as if he's settled down yet into this match. I think both of the players are a little bit cautious. First round, it's oh. only, first round's only a minute and a half, and they've got to get used to each other. Almost picks him up there. Well, you can pick him up off the ground in this particular match, and uh, Mendez, well, yeah. there he goes again. Right underneath his opponent. Not enough rotation. First round then finished. Let's have a look at that uh, inner thigh throw on this replay. There it is. He hops it through. He doesn't have the sleeve. And uh, Mendez just gets off it. Second round. Still no score in this match. No points on the board yet. But uh, I suspect, Mike, that we're going to see some, uh, some action here now. They've uh, you know, both settled down. They know what it's like now. There's the inner thigh throw again. Oh! Beautiful. Beautiful, throw. Beautiful. Side takedown, and uh, he gets three points. So a three-point knockdown, and Mendez has got the points on the board. Oh! It's five points, and uh, he went the wrong way with that particular technique. Well, that's Carlos Mendez. He just comes at you from all angles, and that time he just scooped underneath him and shoulder threw him to the back. So he's got eight points on the board, and uh, quick succession as well. So he's really getting into this match. Ming Ling, oh, well, he tried for a stomach throw there. Again, now they're working in ground techniques. He could either choke him, pin him, or arm lock him. But the referee's not going to give him time. He's got to keep, keep working, keep, keep, keep aggressive. Well, they're outside the area, and uh, the crowd don't like that. They, they wanted them to continue, but uh, he wants more action. The referee, Danny Kikuchi, well, he wants action. 
action, non-stop. And that's what he's going to get. Oh! Ten-pointer. And Ming looked a little... I don't know, Neil. He looks a little... Uh, he's confused he is there. Confused. He might he have got thrown on his head. head. There it is again! Oh! That's it. It's all over. 20 points, two ten-point scores, back-to-back. -back. And what a tremendous shoulder throw that was. Let's have another look at that fantastic drop down, seeing Aggie's shoulder throw, and what rotation he gets there. Flat on his back, 10 points, and he wins the match. So the winner, Carlos Alberto Mendez, and what a crowd pleaser he is. The crowd love him. Next, a workout with Joe Felton when Pro Judo returns. Introducing the Ultra 150 from Kawasaki, the most powerful jet ski watercraft ever. Out here, got conditions. Rims all messed up, so you fix your shot. Sink, no matter, and your game gets strong. Got some nasty conditions out here. <laughs> so you deal. And you keep playing. Arctic Shatter is officially in the house. Who's down on board? We are. Front of the line. Arctic Shatter is here. From Power Age. He's playing. Vesco, we know that before we invest your money with a company, we look deep into that company. We know with whom they do business, where they do business, and what kind of business they do. And we even learn a thing or two about who they really are. Invesco, a family of no-load funds, over 65 years of experience, a global perspective. You should know what Invesco knows. runner-up and in the blue corner here's our hope for the year 2000 olympic gold and for the united states he's from boston massachusetts in the blue corner 1996 olympic bronze medalist jimmy pedro
Yeah. Now, second fight in the under 70 pound division, Rick Horn in white against Jim Pedro, the uh, golden boy of American judo. Certainly a current Olympic bronze medalist and uh, definite favorite for gold in Sydney. So first round and we're off and uh, we're gonna see all action here, Mike. Jimmy's also a graduate of Brown University and also he was a captain of the wrestling team, well-rounded athlete. I think Rick Hahn's going to have his met this match cut out for him. Well, open the account there. Jimmy Pedro, non-stop, very, very good condition. He said he was a great athlete. Ooh, well, he uh, kind of almost threatened there. Um, a coast out a hook round the outside of the leg, and uh, Rick Hahn's got to be very careful of that. I think they're both trying to get used to this minute and a half round. It's a, it's a tough. Well, it changes the pace uh, of the actual match, and um, you can see here, well, he's going to the ground because he loves the ground as well. He said that he's uh, got a wrestling background, and you can see he has. He's working for the arm lock, I think, Neil. He can, again, he can choke him up. There he goes. When he puts that leg over the head, that means he's going for the arm lock. He was uh, almost hooked on there. Um, referee broke them, stand them up, because he wants more action standing, and that's what uh, I'm sure he's going to get. Left-handed fight to Jim Pedro against a right-handed opponent. And, uh, woo! Well, he had to be careful with that one. That was a nice counter. Rick Horn is really taking the fight to Jim Pedro. He's not phased by uh, his reputation. There it was again, and uh, he hooked around the outside. That looks very dangerous, doesn't it? Well, first round, and uh, no score on the board. No points yet, and uh, that surprises me. And I think um, you said earlier that uh, they really need to settle down, Mike. Yeah, I think uh, right there, Jim, Jimmy Pedro's dad, who's coached him since he was five years old, I think he's telling him just, just to relax a little bit more, get your grip, and uh, everything's going to work out. But he's got to relax. The first round was a little bit tense, but I, the athlete that he is, I, I'm sure he'll come out a different person. Well, it's all about changing pace as well. You know, he came out and uh, almost rushed his techniques and it wasn't quite happening for him so what's he going to do now he's got to change it a little bit and there it goes. There it well as soon as he changed it uh, flicked his opponent over with uh, a sumage side takedown and uh, gets the 10 points now he's buzzing so uh, rick has really got it all to do now and uh, oh taitoshi and uh, one of uh, his, well, he's, they're not even losing grips there. He wants to uh, pull him back to the middle. He's got his grip, and uh, I'm going to keep it, he says. There it is Whoa. again. So he's got the hold down now. He gets points there, three points. He could pin him for 15 throw. seconds, Neil. He's got, he could finish the match, but he, well, unfortunately, he, Rick got out of that one. He changed that, and I don't know why he changed it. He loves it down there. He likes the groundwork, and uh, maybe he just wants to get up, and uh, he wants to throw him. Okay, what's he looking for now? There it is again! Oh, now then. Oh, that, that could have that. ended the match. No, I think the referee's calling it out of bounds. Well, it's out of bounds and no score, and Jim Pedro doesn't like that. He says, uh, well, you know, what have I got to do to score? So he threatened with it twice, Mike, and, uh, and there it was. It, uh, it just shows how dangerous it is. And uh, Rick Horn really hanging on now. Jimmy Pedro, got one 10 point score. Second round then finished. Let's have another look at that uh, fantastic uh, technique. Not quite enough uh, control on the upper part of the body, so he only gets a small point for that, Mike. Yeah, basically, you got a five point score there, Neil. So, Jim Pedro then, 15 points on the board, and now he needs five points to finish it off. And uh, third round, come back into the middle, he says. Let's get on with this. Rick's going to have to change up his, uh, his attack. He's got to change his strategy a little bit. It's not working. He needs to work the inside. Oh, no. It's the outside. Oh, oh, oh. Well, what can you say? That Matt is back there, and uh, that's it. He's got uh, second 10-point score on Jim Pedro. What a fantastic uh, judo man Jim Pedro is. Beautiful body lock there. He just locked him up and took him backwards. So Jim Pedro, America's greatest hope 
for an Olympic gold medal in Sydney. He's the winner and uh, great sport he is as well. Let's have another look. Absolutely unbelievable control there. Catches his back there, drives him backwards, flat on his back, full 10 points. Let's go to Neil with Jimmy Pedro now. How did the uh, pro judo system of like three, three one and a half minute rounds, how did that feel out there? Well, it felt quite difficult to tell you the truth. Um, I'm used to going five minutes and I'm known for my quick play, wearing my opponent down all the time. When he gets a minute rest in between every round, it's hard to wear somebody down. So I had to rely a bit more on experience. I had to gain my composure after a tough first round and I was able to come away with the win. And what about your preparation now for the year 2000? I mean, you, we, I've already said that you're one of the favorites for gold in the year 2000 in Sydney. And uh, how's your preparation going for that? Fantastic. I'm actually having my best year ever. I won quite a few major tournaments this year, as you know. And I'm looking quite forward to uh, bringing home a gold in 2000. I hope you do. Jim, thanks very much indeed. Thanks for watching, Neil. When Pro Judo returns, training tips from Olympic coach Mike Swain. Do you dare to be bare everywhere? Can you expose your toes? Or do you hide them because of embarrassing ugly nail fungus that turns nails colors, makes them thick or brittle? Well, now you can discover how it's possible to get healthier nails, more beautiful nails back. By calling this number, you'll receive a free video and learn about effective oral treatments your doctor has. There are 20 little reasons you should call for your free video on nail care and treatments. This year, quit covering up because of embarrassing nail fungus. Learn how to lose those shoes and love it. Then dare to be bare. Everywhere. Because fungus-free nails are a bare necessity. With the year 2000 approaching, we're trying to make sure the software here at Sports Center is Y2K compliant. Y2K test in three, two, one. Oops. More from the NBA and an NFL trade right after this. We definitely have a few bugs to work out, but we'll be ready. Follow me. Follow me to freedom. In order to become a successful judo competitor, you must first off-balance your opponent. In order to do this, you have to have the right grip. Let's look in slow motion on just how to do this. First and foremost, block as your opponent is trying to get his grip. Secondly, we grab this lapel, pull with two hands until we get to the sleeve. This is the most important part because it pulls the opponent off-balance onto his toes. Block, grip and get this sleeve. Very important. Now let's look at this in normal speed. Watch for this type of action in Projo. What a heavyweight match we've got in store. Abelando Carbajal from Cuba and 340 pounds. He's a huge man, Mike. I'm glad I'm not out on the mat with him, Neil. Well, he's... Um, so huge, and there's his opponent there, Joe Felton, hometown Boston, and uh, he's got his work cut out here. Joe okay. used to play for the Detroit Lions. He also played arena bowl for five years, and he's converted into judo. And now he's uh, he's got his work cut out for him. He's given up about 50 pounds here. Well, he's the current uh, U.S. champion, and um, he's looked very determined, <laughs> mind you. So does Carbajal, and um, well, we've got a, a bit of a, a grudge match. I know that uh, there's no love lost between these two, and they'll be going at it 100%. Carbajal's actually a, a three-time Cuban champion. He's just a tough guy. They're both tough guys, and they're big boys. So first round, and well, Joe Felton really got to keep moving here. If he stays still, He's going to have to uh, watch out for the pickup because the Cuban has a huge pickup that he does and he's very, very dangerous with it. Oh, oof. well, you saw it there, Mike. I mean, uh, that hand comes free, gets them between the legs and, uh, and then he gets his leverage, lifts them up. 
Yeah, Joe's given up some uh, power here, so he's really got to keep moving. And that's dangerous now. They're locked in, and uh, the Cuban won't mind that, because it, being the stronger one, and, of course, the heaviest, there's oh, the pick up! Oh! Oh! He caught him by surprise there, I think. Neil, Joe just attacked, and uh, the Cuban countered with a, with a, with a pickup, a big pickup. So, ten points there, and, uh, well, Felton, look at the look on his face. He's he got it all to He's do. coming right back oh. at him, though, Neil. Scored so he, three points there, I think. He fires right back there, Mike, and that was fantastic. I mean, uh, three points on the board there for Felton, and it's ten to three, so uh, the Cuban's still winning. I think the Cuban just scored the big ten points, and then he started walking away, and Joe came right back at him. Well, that's the nature of our game. You really can't tell what's going to happen, you know, the... The Cuban took him by surprise, but Felton fired right back, and uh, he's just not going to give up. So, left-handed fighter Carbajal. There's the first round, then. Ten to three. Let's have a look at that huge pickup. And uh, we said that Felton really did have to be aware of that hand. As soon as the hand comes round the leg, Huge, huge pick up there. Uses his legs and uh, flatten his back for the 10 points. Joe Felton, though, fires right back. Takes him backwards. Carbajal just a little bit too uh, relaxed. So at the end of the first round then, Carbajal 10 points and Joe Felton 3. So into the second round. For all of you martial arts fans watching today, be sure to catch Pro Taekwondo when it premieres on ESPN2 later this month. I can't wait for that, Neil. There should be some great fights. Well, we've got a good fight here. This um, really turning out to be uh, a fantastic match. Yeah, Carbajal's not only 350. Oh! Oh. Well, he's got a five-point score there, and, um, well, he's taking it to him on the ground as well. He's Felt leaning on his head, though, Mike. Felton just barely got out of that move. He almost ended the match there, Neil. Well, the Cuban now is, uh, well, he's got 15 points on the board. Just needs five points to finish it off. And uh, Felton really has got it all to do. He's only got three points. And uh, we knew he was going to have a problem with this huge Cuban. Oh, oh beautiful throw. What a comeback. And uh, he's got the hold now, Mike. He holds him here, Neil. It could be all over. 15 seconds. He's got to hold him for. Oh. Well, the Cuban, so strong there, he just uh, kind of turned him out as if he was a lightweight. But, uh, well, he came back. And now he's got uh, a 10 and a 3. 15 points to 13. Cuban still winning. And it gets a warning there for going across the face. So, uh... Well, Carbajal's not only a uh, big guy, he's also mentally tough. He actually fled Cuba on a boat for five days, and he's living in Miami now for the last couple of years. But he's a very tough, tough, tough individual. Well, so's Felton, and uh, he's proved that. Oh! Pro Judo will be right back. McDonald's will give you the Corvette. What you do with it is up you. The excitement of the Monopoly game is back at McDonald's. Just buy America's favorite fries and play for a chance to win millions of prizes, including a stunt Chevrolet Corvette convertible. <laughs> Where can you go to play the Monopoly game today? Did somebody say McDonald's? When you talk to your kids about drugs, ask them what they want out of life. By helping them set goals, help them see past tomorrow. You help them see that you're there for them. Talk. Listen. Stay involved. You want to make money? Read Forbes. Call now and get a risk-free issue of Forbes, filled with ways to make money and get ahead in business. If you like it, we'll send you 13 more issues for just $19.97, and you'll get the Forbes Investment Guide free. Call now for Forbes. Sometimes, after NHL Tonight, I take my knowledge to a sports bar. There's always someone there who thinks his knowledge is the biggest. Then, I show them mine.
third and final round. And it's a, well, can it's a great match, Neil. I mean, this, this thing could go either way. I mean, it's 15-13. Felton's behind by two points. But uh, watch out. It could go either way. Well, he's got to really watch out for that pickup. I was just about to say watch out for the pickup. And there it was. Harbour Hall can really get underneath it pretty easily. So Felton's got to keep his center of gravity a little bit lower. Well, he just saved himself there, Mike. He just hooked on uh, with his uh, foot and his toe kind of saved him going right the way over the top again. So uh, Joe Felton knows it now. But uh, it doesn't mean that it's not dangerous. It is dangerous. And there's the hand there. Look. There it is oh! again. Whoa. Again, his hand just... stops him. And, oh, uh, oh, well, they're off the uh, edge of the uh, mat area there. and uh, They almost ran. Crushed their coach there. Hope he's all right. Glad it wasn't me there that uh, had to save those two from any of them. Uh, the referee uh, really um, having to stay on top of this, keeping these two big men right in the centre. Now there oh, he's yeah. it. He's changed it. He basically countered the Cuban right there. He countered his pickup, Neil. He just threw him over with. Let's have another look. Uh, he latches on, he goes to pick him up, and then he switches the leg over to the outside and uh, rotates him onto his back for the second ten points. And there he is, Joe Felton then. What a tremendous win for him. What a comeback for him as well. Joe, what can I say? Absolutely amazing technique there to finish it off. First of all, I know you used to play pro football, uh, now pro judo. I mean, how did it feel out there? I felt great. I knew he was uh, 40 pounds heavier than me. I knew I couldn't fool around a whole lot. So I tried to go at him with everything I had. And that, that throw was just there, and I just took it. Well, I know that, uh, I mean, you went down first of all, and uh, we thought you had a long way to, to claw it back, but uh, you managed it, and uh, you've done your first pro judo event. So uh, congratulations, and uh, let's hope that we see you again in that arena. Thanks, Neil. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Da Vinci didn't mess with the Mona Lisa. Beethoven didn't nitpick his Fifth Symphony. Slackers. Introducing the new 99 Infinity Q45 with an electronically modulated suspension, power rear window sunshade, and a host of other advancements that are destined to make it a classic. The new 99 Infinity Q45. Own one and you'll understand. Stone Cold Steve Austin for 800 Collect. I'm not talking to you. What did I do? You're so insensitive. <laughs> Dial zero when you called me last night. You should have dialed 1 800 Collect. It would have saved me a bundle. How do you think it makes me feel? Next time I use 1 800 Collect, I didn't mean to hurt you. Me neither. Now, 1-800-COLLECT or else. A great tradition reborn on ESPN2. First, the undefeated heavyweight C.C. Salif in a four-round bout. Then, the main event. Vinny, the past baby, and Devil Pazienza takes on Joseph Chuanuka. Friday Night Fights, Friday at 9 on ESPN2. Pro Judo has been brought to you in part by Swain Sports International, the ultimate martial arts mat, and Old Milwaukee, America's best-tasting beer. Thank you for watching Pro Judo tonight. This is Neil Adams and Mike Swain saying, see you next time.